Hi folks, this is Team Shuffles, the man, the legend. What do you got for us, bro? I got Paleo Frogs here. We're, you know, we're still playing this deck. Even we're, still, we, we're, we're still last format. The format's format. moved on, but <laughs> we're still hanging in. Uh, we start with uh, three Swap Frog, uh, three Dupe Frog, and two Ronin Totem. Uh, that's a pretty standard ratio. Mm -hmm. Not much to say there. Um, yeah, that's pretty much standard by this point. Um, for draw engine, I do run some more uh, monsters. Uh, I run two Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. Um, I also run um, one Secrets and one Knowledge, but you'll see those later. Um, I think this is a good ratio, and again, this is pretty well flushed out. Um, I do run a couple of hand traps in here. I run two Droll and one Ash. Best one in the format. Oh, yeah. You don't really have a whole bunch more room for these, and at some point, if you have too many hand traps in your deck, um, it can just start to become bricks. So you really only want um, just a few hand traps in there. Um, onto the spells, uh, as I said, you got the spellbook of secrets and the knowledge. That's just to be a bit of a draw engine for you. Why only one of each? Um, if you oh, have too many buddy. spells in your deck, uh, it really starts to lag oh, down. Okay. Uh, you really want to be able to trigger off of your uh, traps as much as possible. So um, really all you want is either this to search one of your two blue boy, or this to either get one of the cards you already have in hand, or um, just get the blue boy you have in hand. It kind of sucks drawing knowledge, so you really don't want to play more than this, and you'd rather have the water monster, that way you can send it off as swap frog, than two spellbook secrets. You can activate a knowledge with draw too. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Um, other spells, I run two Card of Demise. Uh, when I was play, I play tested it at three, um, and I would just see it way too often. Um, I would end up demising into demise, or I would just end up, um, you know, in situations where like constantly I would just full uh, back row, no set. Well, I would end up making a full Bye. back row, and that's great. But I'd end up sending my swap frog off of Card of Demise <laughs> so often, and I just. Uh, that's why I was so hesitant to try card demise for so long. Um, but it really does help you establish so back good, row yeah. so well. Um, I have two scapegoat. Um, you're going first place. Uh, they just help you extend. Mm -hmm. uh, I also run one soul charge as an extender as well. Not a bunch of people are running soul charge in paleo. Um, but I think it's a real big blowout card, and if you see it first turn, you're going to make two totally awesome, and you're not going to lose many of those games. Right. Uh, onto the trap lineup. Uh, I run eight paleo. I run three of the MST. I run three of the Book of Moon. Two of the Lancalia. Um, these are pretty well staples as well. Um, pretty much everybody agrees with these. Uh, where you're going to find people disagreeing is uh, what of the uh, rest of the paleos you run, if any. Um, I like running just the two Lay and Kalia. It, I think it's uh, another extender in the deck, and I think more people should run it. A lot of times, once you banish your stuff off of Rodent Totem, you can activate this, put your, your supplies back into the graveyard, it helps you continue to recycle. Not to mention, um, this card's just about always live as well, especially with as many decks that banish as, you know, in the current format. Uh, other traps, I also play three Reckless Greed. Uh, this card's just amazing. There's, you know, there's literally no downside to this. More times than not, when you activate it, you're activating it during your draw phase anyway, and if you have two Reckless Greed set, you're, you're not going to lose. You're just going to have so much card advantage, it's not going to matter. Right, and the draw doesn't stack, so you still only lose your first two draws. Um, MVP of the day, uh, two Gozen match, and two Rivalry of Warlords. <laughs> what uh, where's Jake? What cards were these, Jake? It's two Gozen match. Are those bitch cards? <laughs> <laughs> These cards will just win you games. A lot of during with a lot of matchups nowadays, if people are making nightmare boards or if people are making um, really anything that uses a bunch of different. Even Sky Striker. Oh yeah, it works anything that uses yep. a bunch of different engines all together uh, goes in match rivalry. A lot of these are just going to be auto wins yep. against. Goki good decks. against Goki too, as yep. long as Trigate don't negate. Yep. Exactly. Um, so this is really good to set up going first. Um, even if you go ahead and do this going second, um, you can just go ahead and clear their board away if they can't negate it. Um, the, a lot of people um, are starting to run three of each. I don't really like that. I feel that a lot of times what you'll end up with 
is I'll be sitting with a rivalry of warlords, but if I see two in my hand, you don't want that. If you see a rivalry and a Gozen, that's great, but it starts to take away from your other plays, and you're just going to end up in situations where, yeah, you're going to be able to floodgate your opponent, but they're not going to be able to do anything either. Right. So, I like that ratio too, yeah. running two of each. So I really like two of each as well. Um, and this really doesn't hurt you at all, except for when you're trying to extend. Uh, obviously, you can't really go into boar load, but nine times out of ten, um, your opponent's going to be so stunned that it doesn't really matter. You don't actually need to extend that far to beat them. Um, other cards, uh, three infinite and permanents. Uh, Rich this, boy. This card's freaking amazing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's great because, um, like I said, you don't really necessarily have a whole bunch of room for hand traps in the deck, uh, but this helps substitute some of that space. So instead of running an effect veiler, you run an effect veiler that you can plus off of and that you can set. <laughs> So, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, also, another fun play is when you uh, target your opponent's monster and they're you know, activating a spell that turn. And uh, if they have an effect monster that's still live, you can just activate infinite impermanence to also negate a spell or trap mm -hmm. effect. So, really love this card. Um, worth every dollar. Uh, and then a judgment and a strike. Um, these are just good cards and help you establish your boards going first. Where's your sleeves, bro? Uh. Yeah, I got my, got my custom paleo sleeve right there <laughs> on the back and in my field center. Um, the extra deck. Uh, I run two totally awesome. Uh, Only two? I probably run three. Um, I was trying to fit more link stuff into my deck, uh, but the I really think that you probably should run three of this. So I think I was wrong to cut out the third one. There was a lot of times where I wanted to extend past and move into a third totally awesome, but I just couldn't because I'd have to. Um, I couldn't because I just didn't have it. Or if I knew I was going to have to make another totally awesome, I'd have to add this back with totally awesome or Star Boy when I could have added a Swap Frog or something else to extend further. Um, so I probably would have ran three. Uh, one Opabania, one Anomalocaris. A lot of people run... Thank God somebody knows how to pronounce it. Because <laughs> I don't. Yeah, well, a lot of people run two Opabania, and I did for the longest time. I really don't think that you need it. Um, a lot of times, even if I go into him, um, it's really just to try and cycle through a lot of my Paleo plays. Um, so you really don't need two of them. It's just the one will do you fine. And then Anomalocaris, uh, you don't make him all that often, but when you do, he just wins you games because he just pops something, you know, every turn, including your opponent's turn. So the quick effect really is what saves you. Um, to the Link monsters, uh, I run one Link Spider, uh, one Link Karibo, uh, just to go off of the scapegoat play. Uh, I run a Mastar two Mastar Boy. Uh, I think Tuma Starboy is uh, just fine. I don't really think you need the third one. Again, a third totally awesome, I understand, but I don't think you really need more than Tuma Starboy. Plus, when you have just the Tuma Starboy, um, you can start to set it up where you have this one in the top in the extra monster zone, point down to this one, and point down to your totally awesome, and that's 8,000 damage OTK exactly. Right there, yep. So you can OTK with it if you can make it. Uh, other Link Monsters, uh, we run a couple of the Nightmares, um, just to help with a bit of spot removal. So I run one Cerberus, one Phoenix, uh, one Unicorn. Um, this is probably the card I would take out for another Totally Awesome. You just really don't go into her. Uh, either you... A lot of times, if you're gonna be in a position to make Unicorn, you just rather make your other Link Monsters that you have in the deck. Um, so you really just never go into her. Um, it's a good card, but again, you just never really do like two elaborate Link plays. And like I said, these are just really good as generic spot removal. Um, uh, sorry, Yuja. Uh, you don't make them all the time, but when you do, he's a blowout card. So if you can make them, go make them. No Mermaid? Uh, no Mermaid, no. Uh, Firewall Dragon. Um, I kept him in here because I was Really, this is kind of like a layover from uh, playing around with the idea of uh, running cherries. But uh, I do like him in here because every now and again, just sort of like, sorry, you just, um, you can go in him, so he's a good utility card. Um, uh, the two rank fours that you do go into the most, uh, Borlo Dragon and Topologic Bomber Dragon. Uh, my last match I won, game one, going into Borlo over a Beals, and game two, going into this to clear a board. Um, these are just really good, and when you're extending, um, these are the cards you really want to go into. Um, not a lot of people run both of them, but I think they're really good for any sort of toolboxy deck. Um, and then the side deck, 
isn't too well developed for today. Uh, but a lot of this is what I would uh, ideally run. Uh, so, run for locals or run for regions? Uh, for like a bigger tournament, I definitely uh, decide a lot different. Um, okay. But uh, the cards I would still run, uh, two evenly, one Ray Geki. Um, this is probably just because I'm a poor bitch and I don't have my <laughs> third evenly. But I really just like evenly at two because you really don't want to see three of them. Mm -hmm. So uh, two of them in your hands at the same time. Uh, so uh, plus I with uh, you also end up siding in um, three sphere mode. So really at that point, um, you know, I feel like siding in uh, two evenly in three sphere mode against things like Goki is usually plenty enough, and then the Regeki as well will usually get your job done. Um, but those are pretty much only in there for the Goki matchup. Uh, other cards that we have, uh, Called by the Grave. Uh, just for decks that have um, a lot of graveyard play, uh, we don't really care about hand traps very much in this deck, so I might side this out for something different, maybe a DD Pro, but I really like the negate monster effect that this card has. What so. does, this, does this deck have a weakness to a particular hand trap? Not really, and that's the nice thing about running Paleo. Uh, if you Ash, I mean, if you use Ash Blossom on Swap Frog, you're an idiot. If you use Droll, I'm only having, you know, I'm only really adding like one card maybe anyway, so it doesn't really matter off of what demise or my blue boy play. Um, so I mean, you don't really add to hand a whole lot with this deck. Um, and when you do, you only do it once per turn. Um, so this deck doesn't really get hit by hand traps. So maybe I'd run something different. But again, I really like the. I think it's just a better DD Crow a lot of cases, especially in this format. Uh, three Mind Crush. This is probably the card I would take out among all of them, though. Uh, it's great and it's amazing, and it really. Um, the big idea was to just stop the evenly matched from getting to me. Um, but I'd probably opt for anti-spell instead. Um, I also debate maybe with the Gozen match and the, uh, rivalry, uh, maybe it might be a bit overkill for the pen um, not the Pendulum, the, uh, Sky Striker matchup to, uh, go anti-spell as well. Um, so maybe I'd prefer something a bit more utility like this, um, but I'd probably still go with the anti-spell on the side. Um, and then finally, uh, three, Cosmic Cyclone. Uh, nobody bullied me this week with Royal Decree, but I was, <laughs> I was really ready for it. So, uh, you know, three Cosmic Cyclone, just in case you get that. And that is the deck. All right, brother. And he got first place. Yep. And what were your matchups? Um, I played against, uh, first round was a Blue Eyes variant, Sky Striker Blue Eyes. Uh, second round, uh, I went up against, now I've got to remember, uh, I went against Pure Sky Striker, and, uh, had goes and match in rivalry, so it was pretty easy. Um, it just shuts the deck down, it's kind of a shame. Um, third game was, uh, ABC Ojama, and I, it was just two decks that grind really well, so it went into time. Yep. And then, uh, fourth game was Vampire. And I was, that was the game that I made my board load my topologic bomber dragon on because I was just able to extend that far. Um, and those were my games. Uh, I tied against, I tied against ABC Ojama, but I won my other matchups. Alright, right on, brother. Congratulations. Thank you.